is a service of Gaylord Entertainment Company. Vehicle Company in America. By Kelly Springfield, America's oldest tire company. By Goodies Headache Powders and Pain Relief Tablets. Goodies, a name you can trust. And by Stevon Denture Adhesive. Not a paste, not a powder. A unique way to hold dentures all day. It's Nashville now! Live from Music City and the TNM Studios at Opryland, USA. Our guest stars tonight are Aaron Neville, Toby Keith, Dion, and the Moffat. Now, here's the host of Nashville now, Ralph Emery. Oh. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Let me see that sign. I love that. I want to tell you, this is the kind of support we get here on the show, the people that work on the show. When, when uh, they call your name, they hold up these signs. Scream and applaud. That's great, isn't it? Boy, that's real support. Speaking, would you hold that for me, please? Speaking of signs, I saw this one way in the back, and I'm, I was afraid you'd miss it, and I thought it was so well done. This is uh, John and Antoinette Brunetti of Clarksburg, West Virginia. Drew a little map from West Virginia to Nashville. And I think that's a great sign. Killer, we should get something for these folks. And boy, have we got a show for you tonight, full of hits. A show full of hits. And we're going to st start off with a hot young singer from Oklahoma who took me. The fact is, that's his name, Oklahoma. I'll... Now, would you please welcome this cowboy who took this song, his first uh, outing, to number one. Here is Toby Keith. Yeah. 
opening bid. <laughs> Sit down. A million dollars? Hey, that's that's better than you're doing on the road, I'm that sure. <laughs> Toby, be better well, than I ever do. I'm sorry I missed you the first time you were here. You were here on a Monday night with the Triple Play. Right. So I want to welcome you to the show and congratulate you on your number one record. Well, thank you so much. It's been a great one. I've had a lot of fun time here. Thank you. I understand you really are a cowboy. Uh, well, I worked uh, for a rodeo company for years through high school and uh, went out on the road and took my little band and me and went out and cut through Texas for a long time and fed a lot of babies. You, uh, I, I was reading some comment you had made that in the nightclubs that you would work when you guys would come in with the long hair, that the cowboys weren't sure what you were going to play until you cranked it up <laughs> and you said, I'm up on the stage and I know I've been on more horses than these guys that are watching me. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes you have been if you've been on a, a farm very long. You've been on a lot of uh, livestock, and sometimes the hats just a masquerade. It don't make the cowboy. Did you, uh, you also played football? Yeah, semi-pro for two years for the Oklahoma City Drillers. And uh, you also worked in the oil fields? Three and a half years for my dad at the service company, Weatherford Lamb. Well, you've done a little bit of everything, haven't you? Uh, in a short period of time. <laughs> what is the story about you're going through customs? We need for you to hold that microphone up just a little closer. Okay. Okay. What's the story about going through customs and bragging about being a country band and, and that working against you? You mean recently? Yes. Well, we went to Cancun to the American Music Festival. And when we come back through the uh, customs, uh, do you know the Cactus Brothers? Yes. They went right through. <laughs> Yeah, they, they're from Nashville. Right, they made it through and we didn't, so. Well, what was the difference? I don't know what the difference was. I said, uh, I'm Toby Keith and I got the number one record in the land. And they said, open your suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> was, this, was this guy a country music fan? Apparently not. <laughs> he or maybe just not a Toby Keith fan. He wasn't that impressed. But everybody else was. Right. Do you have any idea that the Cowboy song would be a number one record? You know, we thought it would be a good icebreaker. We thought it would uh, maybe set some kind of a career for the rest of the album, but I had no idea of these people. I love y'all. Thank you very much. That was great. Toby, I was, I was talking to Nelson Larkin, who produced your record, and he said that he went out to Oklahoma to watch you. Yeah. And that you had, you already had uh, all these great songs written and ready to go in your first album. <laughs> Big Nelly, yeah, he, uh, Nelson and Harold flew out here, flew out to Oklahoma City in, uh, about a year ago. And uh, we didn't press anything that I wrote on them. All we did was just, I kind of turned my stuff over to him and said, here it is, if, uh, if you like some of it, we'll do it. And if you don't, we won't. And they liked some of it, so we did, I think, eight cuts. Who, who picked Should Have Been a Cowboy for the first single? Uh, Harold. Harold Shedd. Harold Shedd. Yeah, well, he was right on target. I'm glad. On tonight's show, we'll have more from Toby, and we'll have Aaron Neville making a rare appearance on this show. He will take us on the grand tour. Big hits from Dion, and the Moffats go to the races, and we have a surprise superstar visit from somebody else. So stay with us.
Magic City News Male Artist of the Year, Alan Jackson. One hot night in Austin you won't forget. Standing in the spotlight, chasing that neon rainbow. Oh, how I wish Dallas was in Tennessee. I could move Texas East. The Alan Jackson Special, Monday at 10 Eastern on TNF. Okay. You comfortable? I'm not. All right. By the way, hey, Moose, we might get a shot of these folks. We have a group of eight people who traveled 2,000 miles from Nova Scotia to see Nashville now. Where are you folks from Nova Scotia? Got, got here late and had to sit in the back, didn't you? Well, we're happy to have you with us, and thank you for coming all the way from Nova Scotia. You know, I'll bet there are a lot of you out there who dance to this next song maybe at uh, sock hops when you were in high school. Well, it's just as good now as it was then. And this is the man who made the song famous. I want you to welcome Dion as he sings The Wanderer. show, my friend. Thank you. you know Toby? Dion, did you ever you hear You are that? a cowboy. I should have been a cowboy. 
Did you ever hear the Eddie Rabbit version of The Wanderer? I think I tuned into your show once and heard maybe the last verse. Yeah, he did it uh, in the past few years. He wrote me a beautiful letter. Did he? Yeah. Did and you got, write The Wanderer? I put it together in uh, 1961. Yeah. It was written about a guy. It's a funny story. It was a guy in my neighborhood. His name was Jackie Burns. I come from an Italian ghetto section, you know, kind of Italian neighborhood, Bronx, New York City. This guy was a sailor, Ralph. You. That's Johnny Scambazza. <laughs> but this guy, Ralphie Burns, he uh, went out with this girl named Flo, and he had it tattooed on his left arm. So he broke up with Flo, and he has it covered up with a panther. Then he goes out with this girl with named panda? Mary. A panther. Or oh, a panther. Then okay. he, uh, he, uh... <laughs> it's a, it's a Bronx thing. <laughs> Hey, he goes out with this girl named Mary, he gets, a tattoo, gets her name tattooed on his right, her, his right arm, breaks off with her, has it covered up with a dagger. Then he, start, he goes out with Janie, has it tattooed on his forearm, gets it covered up. He kept breaking off with these girls, getting these tattoos covered up. And he finally got Rosie on his chest, broke off with her, had it covered up with a battleship. So, uh, but he was a, a wild kind of guy. He used to swagger down the street, you know, with this kind of a John Wayne type of guy, you know? So we uh, put that song together for so him. So he was the inspiration for yeah, all Yeah, definitely. We have a guitar for you. If, if uh, Toby, would you pass that over, please? I understand, Dion, that uh, you are very much a Hank Williams fan. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I got hooked in Hank Williams, on Hank Williams, when I was a, a kid. There was this show coming out of... Uh, Newark, New Jersey, the Don Larkin show, and I got, for a Bronx kid, man, I heard this song, I don't know if I could do it with this mic here, you think I could yeah. move this around? Well, you know, they used to call me the, the Bronx, the country Bronx guy, you know, these things, because I used to come down the street with songs like, um, yeah, I left my home down on the rural route. Told my pa I was going step and out and lead his honky tonk blues. Get a honky tonk blues. Well, Lord, I got on. I got the honky tonk blues. <laughs> But the, uh, the wild thing about that is I used to play these Italian clubs, you know, where you had Frankie Yunk Yunk and Joe BBIs and Ralphie Moach. And they used to yell out, hey, play that jambalaya tune. What does that mean anyway? I said, I don't know, but doesn't it sound good? I mean, it was the 50s. I didn't know what jambalaya meant. So you, you sang all these Hank Williams songs sure. in the clubs around yeah. New York? Play that cold, cold heart thing. Then, then, of course, Tony Bennett finally legitimized that. Yeah. yeah. But, uh... I, Hank, I read somewhere where you had every Hank Williams record he made. Well, you know, if I, listen, if I go back and I listen to the early records, that, um, that's true, the 78s. I mean, I'm older than dirt. <laughs> but, uh, if I listen to the sound, my sound, I have... You know, I went from, you know, maybe doing like Hank Williams to, uh, you know, from like a honky tonk blues to, I love a girl and the ruby is her name. Yeah. So it's like partly country, part rock and roll, and part doo wop because there was a lot of doo wop singing in my neighborhood. You know, and you're street gonna, music. You're gonna do uh, Run Around Sue tonight? <laughs> yeah. Well, Great. I'll look forward to that. Let's have a hand for D.I. Okay? And I will take a break and remind you that this portion of National Now is brought to you by Seabond Denture Adhesive. Not a paste, not a powder. A unique way to hold dentures all day. Seabond. painter, a ditch digger, a truck driver, a freight handler, 
and he's also one of the most famous Neville brothers, too. Would you please welcome our special guest, Mr. Aaron Neville. People see them wedding and I won't go wish them well. You can see that we get the truth in love and man I'm with them. And now the young Michelle and my damn hair on the chapel bell. Still I beat say the old folks. Go to show you never can tell. You find it up an apartment with a two-rub robot say. The cool lady was crammed with tiki dinners and ginger ale. But when P.A. I found with their little money coming work the hot way. Still I beat the old folks. It's so stuck you never can tell. Before a high five phone was born, it is let it play. Seven hundred little records, all about and rhythm and jazz. But when the sun went down, the rapid tempo of the music fell. Still a beat, baby, go for the gun and show you never can tell. done so much in music. How often do you work with your brothers? Uh, we're on the road all the time. You, you, ever work, you work the road with Linda Ronstadt? Uh, not lately, but I've, I talk to her every once in a while and we're still talking about doing some things together. What are you doing in Nashville? <laughs> well, I mean, hey, look, my, my lawyer's from here, Craig Hayes, and uh, I came up to, to do this show and do some press and stuff, you know. And Did you make a record with Trish Yearwood? Yeah, yeah. Uh, day before yesterday, we did a Patsy Cline song called I Fall to Pieces. You did that with her? Great. Yeah. Is this for a special project? I think it's like a compilation of uh, uh, rock, pop, R&B, and blues singers doing duets with country singers. So are there a lot of country singers who are singing with the rhythm and blues singers? Yeah. And I don't know exactly who's doing what, but I know it's going to be, you know. Now, tell me about George Jones. <laughs> Well, Judge Jones, I like to say something to him if he's in the sound of my voice. My brother Art told me to tell him that, uh, and this Art said, he said his first favorite singer was Aaron Neville, Judge Jones, and Sam Cooke. And he turned me on to Judge Jones some years back, and I love everything he's done. And you've recorded the Grand Tour. Right. Why did you pick that particular song? Well, my producer, Steve Lindsay, is also on organ over there. He brought it to me, and, and, you know, he didn't have to sell me on it. He just came up with the idea, and I said, hey, man, yeah. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a break. I'd like to hear you sing it. Would you sure. folks like to hear it? Okay, we'll do that. This, is, this was George Jones' monster hit of 1974, and I predict it's going to be a big hit for 
Aaron, too. The Grand Tour will be coming up right after this, so stay with us, or you're liable to miss the boat. Tomorrow night, Ralph welcomes the Sheriff, Baron Young, plus Shelby Lynn, Con Hundley, and the Little Wild Man Shotgun Red. All live tomorrow night on Nashville Now. Some of the best pictures happen without warning. So Walmart reminds you, keep a new Polaroid 35mm camera handy and keep it loaded with a simple choice. Polaroid One Film in the three-roll pack with a rollback price of just $4.97. We never stop from... There's some beautiful songs, including the Lord's Prayer in this album. And uh, the song you heard, you, you, can, uh, you never can tell what she did a moment ago. But now we're going to go for the title song. Here's Aaron Nevin with the Grand Tour. Come on in. If you'd like to take the Grand Tour of the lonely house that once was home sweet home I have nothing here to sell you just some things that I will tell you some things I know will cheer you to the bone over there Sits the chair where she bring the paper to me and sit down on my knee and whisper, Oh, I love you. But now she's gone forever in the cold house where we met above. Without the love that we once knew Straight That's the bed Where we lie in love together And Lord knows we had a good thing going here Her picture on the table Don't it look like she'd be able Just to touch me And say good morning, dear And there's her ring All the things And I close the ring As you leave, you see the nursery. Oh, she left me without mercy, taking nothing but our baby in my heart. Step right up, come on in, come on in. said something earlier if George Jones were in within the sound of your voice or something like that. Well, he is. Oh, well, go ahead. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome George Jones. Come on, Kaiser. George, we, 
I guess we'll wait till the standing ovation subsides. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'll tell you what, Ralph, this is a big thrill, and I wouldn't miss this walk on tonight <laughs> for anything in the world. I'll tell you, I heard of you just coming to town, so uh, I got cranked up for it. I went out to the farm and stayed there the whole time until I was ready to come in. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think of the song? I love this. I've always loved the song. I was, I'll tell you what, I was watching him backstage right there a while ago, about half of it, and uh, I, I caught you on PBS station the other night yeah. doing your entire show. Yeah. And uh, I like the way you do them little... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But it's a lot of soul in it, I'll tell you that. A lot of soul. Aaron, did you learn, did you learn this song from George's record? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm singing Lick for Lick, you know, like that. <laughs> hey, why well, try to do anything else with a perfect song, you know? Well, what a great voice, I'll tell you. You can do a lot with it. But I love your voice too, Josh. You did a wonderful job on Grand Tour. I just want you to know that. It ought to be a big, big thing for you. Thank you. Thank you. George, uh... I'm just curious as to what else he likes in the George Jones catalog. What about it, Aaron? Well, I got a friend of mine who owns a record shop. He's pulling up all the George Jones songs, and I'm going to listen to them. <laughs> Actually, we have another George Jones song on tonight's show. These little kids, the Moffats. Oh, they told me they had a surprise, but I didn't know what uh, it was. Yeah, you, you need to watch them tonight, because they're going to sing something that you know very well. All right. I love that. And, well, you're going to stick around, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, no, all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Aaron, thank you very much. George, I thank you. Don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back. Jaco says, for the freedom to go anywhere... I want to mention... I want to mention Norrell Wilson. I know Norrell is here tonight, and he and Carmel Taylor, George, I think they they wrote the Grand Tour, didn't they? Right. I think uh, Richie, uh, Carmel, and and Norrell. And, uh, and I may have added one too many. I don't know. It's, but I know uh, Norrell did. Yes, and, and, and he's here tonight. Now, George, this is what I want you to pay attention to. Now, here are my little Canadian buddies back on the show. They're regulars on the show from out in British Columbia, and they're going to sing The Race Is On. Here are the Moffats. Welling up, calling deep inside of that my heart gonna be a great And the sky of loneliness sharp and painful that I may never shake If I say that I was sick in the heart if you drop me off with the car But don't you wager that I have sorrow that I may never have down in bar The rain sees on and here to find the fast Sit down right in the middle here. 
How are you? Great. Great. Welcome back to the show. Thank, Thank you. you. Have you met Mr. Have you met Mr. Jones over there? Yes, we sure have. A very nice guy. I understand you guys have been getting a lot of fan mail, and that you answer your fan mail. Yep. Yep. We sure do. Yep. Who does the Who Who writes the letters to the fans? All of us. All of you do. What What do people say to you when they write to you? Well, they ask us um, how much it costs is to be in our. Fan club. Fan club. Okay. Uh, it asks is if they ask if we um, they could get a picture and some tapes and. Well, well they, they want to know what kind of merchandise you have. Yeah. Do you do you tell them about your album? It's yeah. A, it's a wonderful world. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's in, what's in your album? Songs. You, songs. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm going to go around to all of you. Na name a song in your album. Wonderful World. Do a Diddy. Okay. Bird Dog. I think I'll find you love. Okay. All right. Th those are four of the songs that are in the album. Now, do you get lots of mail from this show? People seeing you on Nashville now? Yeah. Yes. Lots. Lots. When, uh, do they want to know if uh, you have a girlfriend? I got one. <laughs> Well, do, do, do the young ladies about your age write to you? Yeah, yeah. What do they say? Well, some, uh, today we got three, and they like Scott. Well, they all like Scott? Did that, did that hurt your feelings? No. Because you already got a girlfriend? Yeah. Okay. Do you have a girlfriend? Nope. Okay, how about you? Lots. Oh, lots. <laughs> how about you, Scott? I don't know. You don't know whether you have a girlfriend or not? No. Same with Clinton. I don't hmm? have none. Oh, okay. Steve, always, Steve takes them all away. Oh, he's chased them all away. Well, I'm delighted to have you guys on the show tonight. Thank you. Now, what do you, what do, you do when you're not singing here in Nashville? We swim. Go swimming. We write songs. And we play baseball. And we go to movies. Okay. Everybody had an answer. That worked out beautifully. <laughs> Killer, can I, can I have my uh, shotgun red doll here? Did you hold your tape for me? Yeah. Okay. All right. You see, uh, Shotgun Red's going to help me sell some tires. This portion of Nashville Now is brought to you by Kelly Springfield. Are you in the market for new tires? Kelly Springfield's been in the business since 1894. I'd say they're doing something right. So let's take a look. Take a close look at a Kelly Springfield tire. Beneath every computer design tread, every perfectly aligned belt, every smooth riding body and time-tested lining lies the first rubber tire that actually... I want to ask, uh, I talked to George Jones on the telephone the other day. You had an awful problem at your house, didn't you? A what? An awful problem with your dog. With my what? Your dog. Oh, my dog. When your dog... Yeah. Might... We, uh, he get, sent him to get him groomed this morning, and he come back with a... like he had a broke leg, and he just... Uh, uh, somehow they dropped him off the table or something, or it was slippery, and... Uh... That's not the problem I'm talking about. What I'm talking, talking about, about when your dog met the skunk. Oh, this was about uh, last weekend, I think. Yeah. Yeah, he got out in the flower bed at 4 o'clock in the morning. He went out, you know. It had to, he has to go out whenever he wants to. And uh, the skunk was in the uh, flower bed. And it, they woke me up at 4 o'clock in the morning with all the lights on in the house and everybody hollering. Whoo, you know how bad it smelled. Yeah. <laughs> Did the dog come back in the house? Yeah, we put him, we kept him on the other end, though. We we bathed him in uh, everything in the world. But he got about 20 baths that day. <laughs> and uh, two or three or four of them was with uh, tomato juice, and, and the last one that did the job, though, was V8, believe it or not. <laughs> well, all right, V8, there, there's a nice endorsement for you. <clears throat> Aaron, I, uh, I understand that when you came to Nashville, you bought a bunch of Hank Williams records and sang all the way to Memphis with Hank Williams. <laughs> 
No, but I, I like grew up on Hank Williams, you know. I, as a matter of fact, on my last session, I did about 20 songs, and one of the songs was I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry, but it's not on the album. Will it come out eventually? Eventually, yeah. George, you knew Hank Williams, didn't you? I met him uh, uh, one time, and we sit and talk for about two hours, I guess, in the radio station, at KRIC in Beaumont. That's back when I played with Eddie and Pearl. Didn't he come to the station promoting his show? Did he what? Did he come there promoting his local show? Right, he was in town that night at the uh, Blue Jean Club, or Old Corral, I forget what it was called back then. And uh, he did a show, uh, he was friends with the radio uh, program director, and Neville Powell, and he, uh, Neville got him to do a song, Wedding Bells, which was his current release, and uh, on our radio show at four o'clock in the afternoon uh, to promote his show that night. Did you get to play guitar for him? Well, I, I played lead guitar during, back at that time, or tried to, and uh, I stood across the mic. The mic came down, you know, in, in the studios in the old days, and I stood directly across from him, and I was going to play some pretty fill-ins, you know, and uh, I've never hit the first note. I just stared at him, was lost in another world. <laughs> So you were there standing in awe of the man. Did he right. give you any advice? Do what? Did he give you any advice? He sure did. Uh, I tried to sing like uh, like him, you know. And he was telling me about someone that, uh, that he loved so much, you know, Roy Acuff. And that he tried to sing like Roy Acuff also. And he said, I thought I did a pretty good job too. But they finally, somebody told me that... Uh, uh, I found out, in other words, I, uh, he said, I found out that uh, they already had a Roy Acuff, so I better figure out another way out. So uh, I remembered that, and uh, I used to try to sing like him so much, and Roy, and uh, when I was starting off, so... I can hear a lot of Roy Acuff in your singing. Well, yeah, I got about three, with Lefty and Hank and Roy, and I, I just let them take over when I start singing. <laughs> George, I'm really tickled you came out tonight. We're going to move back to our long, tall Oklahoma newcomer. Would you please welcome again to Toby Keith?
course, you can see Tracy Lawrence, Crystal Gale, Patty Loveless, and Lee Greenwood in concert. Opryland Chevrolet Geo Celebrity Theater in July. Opryland and TNN for the best in country. Take Kraft Ranch Dressing. Throw in the taste of rich, sour cream. Conjure up a minced onion. And what do you get? The new Kraft Sour Cream and Onion Ranch Dressing. Its mystifyingly unique, cool and creamy taste will make salad lovers everywhere describe it as mm, truly magical. Sour Cream and Onion Ranch, new from Kraft. 99 years ago, we built our first Kelly Springfield tire. In that time, Americans invented TV. We fought in two world wars. We flew the first airplane and settled the West. First of all, I want to wish you a happy birthday this Sunday. And my spies tell me that uh, it is your birthday. We're going to go back to 1961 for a number one pop hit, which I understand uh, Relate, relates to your wife. Well, the, I, I've been married 30 years, and she these days she runs around the mall. Uh huh. Her, her name is Sue. Yeah. The song is "Run Around Sue." Let's do it. Everybody say. Hear my story and sad but true about a girl that I once knew. She took my love. Then run around with every single guy in town. She was here. I know. One, two, one, two, three. Hey.
guys. Remembering Run Around Sue. We haven't done this in quite a while, but we're going to do it with all of our guests tonight. We've, uh, Kathy, you got a microphone? Yes, I sure do, Ralph. Okay. Uh, we're going to go out to Kathy, and uh, she's going to uh, bring us some of our guests. And this is Q&A time. You can ask questions of any of our guests here on the panel. And uh, I want you to identify yourself and tell me where you're from. All right. What's your name and where are you from? Hi. Uh, my name is John Walsh. I'm from Thompson, Manitoba, Canada. And your uh, question is for uh, Mr. George Jones. Uh, first, I'd like to say, Mr. Jones, you are my all-time uh, hero. I'll tell you, you're the best. Well, bless uh, your heart. Thank you. But could you... You, you've it. left me with uh, my question is you have a song that's one of my favorites called her name is and I wonder could you fill in the blanks for me tonight please what is her name <laughs> <laughs> well that's was really the name of the song and I don't know what the title was. well I've always gone that her, her name, name is but I, I mean always the... said her name was Gloria uh, her <laughs> hair is like sunshine she's five foot you... two and has blue eyes but yeah see well, you people are supposed to fill that in about your sweetheart see oh well I guess, I guess that'll, uh, Glory I got will my do. answer. Glory will do. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> All right, who's our next guest? Hi, I'm Tommy Phillips. I'm from New Orleans, and I got a question for Aaron Neville. Okay. Uh, I'd like to know if you still record with your brothers. Yeah, we on the road right now. We're doing a live album together. And, uh, hey, I'll always be a Neville brother. <laughs> That's great news. Okay. When will that be out of, uh, uh, next year? Comes out next year. Yeah. Okay. We've got a threesome here. What are your names and where are you from? Emily Barrett, Dusty Felder, and I'm Erin Felder. We're from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And our question is for Dion. We were wondering what is the inspiration for Run Around Sue? Run Around Sue. Well, there was this girl in my neighborhood. <laughs> uh, her name was Roberta. I couldn't rhyme it with anything, so <laughs> we called it Sue. <laughs> Yeah, she <laughs> Okay, girls. Thank you. I thank you. All right, next. Hello, my name is Jennifer Walsh. I'm from Thompson, Manitoba, Canada. And my question is for George Jones. And I just wanted to ask personally what you think of the remake of The Race is On by Sawyer Brown. What do you think of it? What, we can't hear your question, honey. Okay. What do you think of the remake of the song The Race is On by Sawyer Brown? Oh, wait, what Which do you think of the remake of uh, The Race, Race is On by Sawyer Brown? Oh, it's fantastic. Fantastic. They do a good job. Sawyer Brown is great on just about anything he does. Okay. All right, All right let's next. move to our next guest. My name is Alan Johnson. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and my question is for George Jones. Um, how old were you when you made your first record? Well, it was 1954. <laughs> February, in fact. I think I was uh, about 22. I thought uh, you were five, George. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Next we have uh, Jesse Brock from Lahoma, Oklahoma. And my question is for George Jones. All right. I want to know how he got the name Opossum. I believe it was T. Tommy Couture because uh, he used to be just disc jockey here in Nashville for many years. and. And I had an album out one time with a side view picture. It was White Lightning was the name of the album. And I looked, I had a crew cut, and I turned up nose, and I looked like a possum. I really did. I... <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Okay, my name's Lila Barnett. I'm from Oklahoma City. And George Jones, I was wondering if you got to spend, my, spend some time with your grandchildren. You get to spend time with your grandchildren. Have a... Have I spent time with them? Do you get to a lot? Part of them, uh, <laughs> uh, all the time, but uh, some of them, they live down in Texas, and, and I don't uh, get down there too often, but when I do, we get to see them. Do some of them live here, George? Hmm? Do some, some of them? Some of them live here, yeah. How many grandchildren do you have? Oh, I lost track. I think I got about seven. Okay. <laughs> all right, next question. Also, for Toby Keith, I was wondering if um, you're seeing a girl or have a girlfriend? Uh, no. <laughs> Actually, I'm married. Oh. <laughs> she left. Broke a heart there. See, these, new, these new hot country yeah. artists are not as young as you think they are. <laughs> <laughs> she left the building. <laughs> All right. Hi, my name is Kara Bannock, and I was wondering for any of you, 
Um, do you have any suggestions for kids my age to get into show business or How old are you? 14. Uh, anybody want to advise a 14-year-old girl about getting into show business? Finish school first. <laughs> there you go. I'm Martha Olive from Bristol, Tennessee, and my question is for George Jones. I want to know if you're, it made you proud to be included in so many people's songs. Is, how many? What, now, what do you mean by that, honey? Like his name is used in almost a lot of people's songs. Uh, I think it's just a lot of some of the artists, other artists, uh, especially here lately, some of the young artists uh, are just kind of more or less paying tribute to me a little bit. I think you might be talking about Doug Stone and uh, one of his songs and then Alan Jackson and Don't Rock the Jukebox, things like that. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, I, they're just uh, being real nice to me, and I'm being real nice to them when I can. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Next question. My name is Travis Morgan, and I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I have a question for George Jones. Okay. Um... Are you going to have a new album come out? We're working on a new one right now, son. Uh, in fact, we got all the tracks down, and they're trying to get me back in. They're rushing me to get back in to finish up uh, a little touch-up work here and there. So it should be out this fall, we hope. Okay. Uh, I believe that we're out of time for this segment. I thank all of you, ladies and gentlemen. What's interesting to me... It's, it's interesting to me the ages of these kids out here who are asking George Jones and all these questions, the, who are country music fans. A whole new generation, George. Well, that's, that's true. It makes me feel awful good, I'll tell you. Now we, we're going we're gonna to stay with our young theme here and go back to our special guest from Canada, the Moffats. Cause I'm getting this kind of feeling that I've never had before. Each running through my fingers, each tickle in my toes. My body's feeling all messed up, and my heart is yelling, Whoa. prettiest girl that I've ever seen. I like to take her for a walk and hold on to her hand. Watch the birds fly above and make yourself in the sand. Dad, tell me, is this what it's like to fall in
I scream, you scream. We all scream for ice cream. <clears throat> we all scream for ice cream. Thank you. Hershey's chocolate syrup. Mom, save up for two dollars and fifty cents. Buy two gallons of ice cream. One Hershey's syrup and one topping. See store display for details. Two ice creams, two ice creams. George Jones for coming by and paying us a visit and uh, paying tribute to Aaron Neville. And uh, George, it's a pleasure to have you out here on Nashville now. Well, thank you, Ralph. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't miss this for anything in the world. I had to see this man and, and hear him in person. And uh, I caught him on one of his uh, uh, PBS shows, like I said a while ago. But uh, you like, all, when they sing that good, I want to find out if it's true or not. Well, it certainly you is. Know, and in person, and it definitely is true. And don't forget George Jones Dog Food at your favorite store. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> George, thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, George Jones. You can go this way, George. Yeah. Oklahoma friend Toby and uh, his English teacher might not approve of this song, but uh, you ain't gonna want to miss. He ain't worth missing. Here's Toby Keith with his current hit. Toby, take it away with the band Easy Money. <laughs>
Well, my friends, I know that occasionally you feel miserable because of an old headache. And this portion of Nashville now is brought to you by Goodies. When you've got a bad headache, count on Goodies headache powders for fast pain relief. Look for Goodies headache powders with a new safety overwrap. Goodies, a name you can trust. When I've got a bad headache, there's nothing else I've ever tried that works faster than a Goodies headache powder. Thank goodness. Goodies is back. Goodies is back, all right, with a new safety overwrap. The minute I feel a headache coming on, I just take a Goodies headache powder and goodbye headache. No wonder it's a formula doctors prefer three to one over BCs. Thank goodness. Goodies is back. Goodies, a name you can trust. Reach for a star. Loretta Lynn quits showbiz after triple heartbreak. Pal Conway Twitty's death, the loss of her brother, and her husband's long fight for life. Read her touching story. Then meet the ten sexiest women alive. Reach for a star. And let famed psychic Gene Dixon read your horoscope for the rest of 1993. The amazing series starts this week. Plus, Jealous Bird had private eye snoop on Lonnie. Julia Roberts' hotel room honeymoon. Kirstie Alley to adopt a second baby. Here, along with Shotgun Red, tonight... We want to thank all these great stars, Aaron Neville, Toby Keith and with his band Easy Money, Dion, the Moffats. And we're going to close with something very special. This was done by Dion back in the 60s, Abraham, Martin, and John. And he's going to be joined on the closing song by the great Aaron Neville. Good night. Anybody here see my old friend Abraham? Can you tell me where he's gone? He freed a lot of people, but it seemed the good they died. Uh-huh. Just look around and he's gone. Anybody here see my old friend John? Can you tell me where he's gone? He's freed a lot of people, but it seems the good they die young. I just looked around and he was gone. Just look around, he was gone. Oh.